Okay, <clears throat> so let us uh, begin and thank you all and uh, welcome to SAP logistic uh, invoice uh, verification topic. And today's topic is logistic invoice verification. This is the last step, the last topic in terms of process. Logistic invoice verification. Logistic invoice verification is the process of verifying the vendor's invoice. So after the vendor has submitted his invoice, then we verify the invoice submitted by. That is what the process we're going to do going through entire SAP logistic invoice verification processes. When vendor submit his invoice, we verify that invoice against our purchase order and uh, against our invoices so this is the end-to-end -end process which we have discussed before as well so the first and foremost is the planning where we do the planning of the material planning tells me requirement for a material then the next step is to do work into purchasing So we work into purchasing where we create a purchase order, give this purchase order to the supplier. And after the purchase order, we saw and we did that exercise. We went to inventory management and we do a guru seat. We did that as well. And after the guru seat, then we place the material in the warehouse. We did warehouse also. The logistic invoice verification is the last topic. When vendors submit the invoice, invoice comes to us, and then we submit the invoice. And when we submit the invoice, we verify it, and then we become liable to pay to a, to a vendor. So then we become liable to pay to the supplier. So it creates an end-to-end -end liability for us. Because at the end of the day, vendor is my creditor. We owe the money to the vendor. And then we integrate with the finance. We have discussed and we have done in our class integration with the sales, integration with distribution, we did a sales order with the deliveries. We also did integration with other modules, production and others, quality management. This is a, the process. Okay, so here we have purchase order. In a guest purchase order, we create a guru seat. With reference to guru seat, then we do invoice verification. We verify the invoice submitted by the supplier. And when we supply the, when we verify the invoice, you see the open item. So we can have a open items. In open items, basically means where system create is liability. So that become open item. Now, when we do the open item, obviously you see that here, project, cost center, asset, orders, and all that. That basically means the cost gets assigned to different cost objects or GL account. When you create invoice verification, it it update my account payable which basically means I become liable to pay. 
when I'm telling invoice verification, if you see here, this, is, this picture also shows the power of integration. If you look at this picture carefully, you also integrate material master. You also refer price. You also refer vendor. So a lot of uh, purchasing, inventory, material, price, vendor, open item, PO history, many things get updated. So the impact of logistic invoice verification is that it's in, in the background, it automatically integrates various functions. That is where we have a logistic invoice verification. This is the process which we have. We are purchasing, we did that. We created a purchase order many, many times. Then we did a guru seat. We did that many, many times. And when we do guru seat, system creates an accounting doc, GR document, guru seat document, material document. And also create accounting document. We did that exercise as well, where you integrate with accounting function. Then in the last, after the good receipt, vendor submit his invoice, and then we post invoice, and in the system, system create an invoice receipt document. And then it also, it also update my finance as well. So there is another integration with the finance here. So finance, this is another example of integration with the finance. The integration of MM with the finance module happens multiple places. Two important places are at the time of good receipt and at the time of invoice receipt. So those two places are critically important where integration happens in this okay. okay. So documents and materials management. We have a transition it's earlier and now. Okay. Earlier we used to have a transaction code MIR01. That transaction is not available or redundant. Now with the new transaction is Miro. Look at this picture carefully. The new transaction code is Miro, M-I-R-O. We're gonna use this transaction code. We have used this before. We're gonna use it again. So Miro. And with the Miro, system create two documents. System create logistic invoice document and system create finance document. So these two documents system create automatically. So at the result of Miro is logistic invoice document and financial document. I would like you to draw this picture. I would like you to draw this picture. So when I do Miro, with the Miro system create logistic invoice verification, and with the Miro system also to create a financial document as well. So it create these two documents. If you look at this picture or this diagram, which is there, there is a central accounting. Nobody uses this anymore. I haven't seen it, but in the past many years back. Some people used to use it. So we have a plant and uh, we have a, so normally what was happening is that we have a one box where uh, logistic inventory sales purchase is taking place. And then do we have another box of SAP where uh, only accounting is happening and they're connected with something called ALE. So if you make a note of it, there is something called ALE. ALE basically means application link enabling. Is it is a type of uh, technology or technical programs which allow you to 
link to different systems. Make a note of that early. Application link enabling. Okay. That is what we see here. Now, when we create a logistic invoice verification document, we saw that before, that we have a logistic invoice document, and behind the scene system can also create a financial document as well. So two different documents get created in the system. So logistic invoice document create Okay. okay. So that is an example. So that basically means the result of all invoice verification is two documents. One is a logistic invoice verification document, and second one is a Financial document, two separate documents, or this is also called accounting document. This document update account table. This account remain in the logistic of MM module. This is the module, which is this is the document which goes into finance because at the end of the day, we become liable to pay. So account payable document. So this is a document in the finance in account payable module. Now what we are saying here is in this picture. In this picture, make a note of this bullet, second bullet point, take pen and paper and make a note of it and then I will explain. So now what is the meaning of that is? So we mentioned that um, we have a logistic invoice document, there is a financial document. Okay, now what is the meaning of that is? The meaning of that is, we said there are two documents that are created, logistic and finance. Now, normally, the logistic and finance document has two different numbers because they're two different documents. One is an MM, one is in five, five module. So they're two different documents, so they're two different numbers. But now, with the new latest release, now it's not that latest, many years now actually, it's a, the logistic invoice number and finance invoice number, both numbers could be same. So if my logistic invoice number is 100102, then my finance document number can also be 1000120. So both document could be same document. In SAP, you can do different kind of invoicing. So Miro is the core invoice. This is a transaction code Miro. So transaction code Miro um, is uh, the core transaction which is being done in SAP system. Okay. Okay. So we have a Miro. And then with the Miro, we have a something called another transaction called Mira. So where it is all these transactions? If I go here in the logistic, and in the logistic, if I go to materials mismanagement, if I go back here in the logistic invoice verification, here we have a different transaction, and this is where we have Miro. Apart from Miro, we also have Park MIR seven. We also have a, we'll talk about the parking as well. Then we also have a MIRA, Mira, which is basically doing voice verification in the background mode. Okay. Okay. So it's Mira. That is what we see. The different transaction. If I want to see the invoice of MIR six, if I want to block MIR BR, so there are different transaction code which are there. Okay. So we there are different business scenarios. Now we talk about this uh, multiple screen approach to single screen approach. Yeah, single screen. We talked about this single screen approach in PO. We talked about the single screen approach in MIGO. Because MIGO is also a new transaction. 
then ME21N, N is also a new transaction. It was used to be ME21. Similarly, Miro is also new transaction. Okay. So that is what, so now what is that basically means that uh, it has single screen and from the one screen, you can do the entire transaction. So SAP moved from multiple screen to the single screen. Now, what is the benefit of it? The benefit of single screen transaction is that your keystroke number of clicks reduces because you're not going to and flipping different pages. So for purchase order, for good receipt, and for invoice verification, for a lot of these transactions, SAP moved from multi-screen to single screen. Now there is something called authorization object. Now invoice verification is an important transaction, of course, because invoice verification, you're verifying the invoice submitted by the vendor, and the result of that is basically you become liable. So you're creating a liability for your company. You become liable to pay to your supplier. And because it is creating a liability, therefore you need to be careful that who can do this. So who is actually authorized to do invoice verification? And for that only, we have different organizations. Okay. okay. So they are different authorization objects which you can do in the SAP system, okay? Now, what do we basically mean by that? That basically means you can uh, make authorization, for example, on company code. You can make an authorization, for example, on the plant. So what does that basically mean? So basically means that is that by company code, you can define who can do. So company code A, you can, Michael can do. Company code B, Thomas can do. You can also define authorization by a plant. Okay, plant in New Jersey, Michael can do. Plant in Chicago, Thomas can do. Plants in Alabama, Richard can do. And you can also do this based upon account type, GL, and different other objects. So you can restrict authorization to different people. Means you don't want that in the New Jersey plant is the invoice in Chicago plant, or Chicago plant is the invoice in New Jersey plant. It's also obviously it's not a good idea. So the access who can do transaction has to be limited or assigned to a specific people who can do that. That is what authorization object for logistic invoice verification is. So we talk chapter number one, we talk about invoice verification. How do we do different uh, uh, exercise end to end, right? So, so that is chapter number one. Now I want to do an exercise, okay? So what I want to do, I want to do end-to-end -end purchasing process. Now, with invoice verification, our focus is invoice verification. We have done all these steps many, many times. Um, you know, it's, we have done material, PO, vendor, go receipt, and all that many, many, many times. So there is nothing different and unique there. So, I want to create a new material master record. We want to create a new vendor master record. We created material before many times. We can use same, but I'm just creating a new. You have existing, you can use existing. It's not necessary that you use the old one. I want to create a vendor master. Uh, material master transaction code is uh, MM01. Uh, what is the transaction code for vendor master? I forgot that. What is the transaction code for vendor master? I forgot. Mm -hmm. Anybody remind me? Anybody will be kind enough to remind your forgetting teacher. What is the transition code? What's getting vendor master? So I have two people, Parit Trivedi and Ram Sridhar, two helping nature people, and Ila Prajapati, three people who are helping nature. So transition code is XK01, that is correct. 
Um, after that, I want to create a PO, the same PO, uh, MB21N. I want to create a Guru Seat, the same MIGO. We did many, many times, nothing different. And then I want to do logistic invoice verification. Okay. In the logistic invoice verification, I want to do the transaction code Nero. XK01. Okay. So now I want to do the so end to end process. And um, in here in the logistic invoice verification, I want to verify accounting document. And uh, account entry, that is what I want to verify. And I want to also display when the balance is in front. OK? So these are the steps <coughs> which we want to do now. OK? So now we go to Material Master. So we go to MM01. This is the same Material Master many, many times we have done. So nothing different, nothing unique. I will go quickly because we have done many, many times. So it's nothing really new in it. Um, so we select raw material. We created this for plant 1000. Uh, we can use for store location 0001. Hit enter. And then uh, this is a regular um, purchase material. Purchase material. Okay. Hit enter. And then we enter the purchasing group. And then um, hit enter. And we hit save. Okay. So we get a regular material. So we have so this is a material which we have created. This is a regular material we have created many many times. Nothing different, nothing unique actually into it. There was no need to do this. We could have used existing material as well. We could XK01. And uh, in this vendor also there is actually nothing different. You could have used any of your existing vendor as well. So I just create this vendor by copying a uh, bigger to an existing vendor. Okay. Okay. We create a company code 1000, purchase organized 1000, hit enter, hit enter. We enter the vendor who is our supplier. So our supplier is Costco. Enter the route. Enter the code address, 
which you've done many, 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 many time. Nothing different, nothing unique. And we save it. So see the message in the bottom? We've created a vendor. So this is the vendor, 105.352. So this is the vendor. One zero five three five two. Okay, so this is the vendor master. Okay. So we did that. Now we want to create a PO. The same transaction code, which you've done many, many times, the PO also same. In this PO also, there's nothing different. It's just the PO we need to have, so we're creating the PO. In the vendor, we can enter the vendor, which we just created. I think it was this vendor, Costco. Purchase on 1,000, purchase group 00, zero per company for 1,000. And then we create a material, and the material is 29908. So we entered this material here to 9908. We create a quantity, 100 pieces, and uh, we enter the price. We enter price, whatever, $10, whatever, doesn't make a difference. So we enter price, okay? And then we set. So we create a PO. This is the regular PO. Nothing different. After PO, we want to create a good receipt. Same transaction code MIGO, which you use many times. And in this good receipt is also standard good receipt. In good receipt also, there is nothing different. Similar to what many of them we have done in the past. And then, uh, we enter the material 29908. We enter quantity 100. Uh, moment type 101, plant 1000. Satorage location is 001. So, Satorage location you can enter 0001. And then uh, item OK. We hit check. And we have green light. And we can set. See the message in the bottom, but your document 600210 posted. That basically means we are able to create a material document. Okay. So now, after that, we go back. And we go to the step of Miro. Now we go to Miro. We're going to verify them. This is Miro. This is incoming invoice posting. Invoice date. So the date on invoice. Invoice date. Hit enter. We enter the account, oh, sorry, amount, 1,000. We enter the PO number, hit enter. Okay, so now what does that basically mean? Now that basically means that this is our invoice posting. Yeah? This information which is we enter on the top, this is the header, and this is the line item. In the header, we have all this information, the invoice date, posting date, amount, this is the vendor, Costco, payment term, what is the date of the payment term, 52, company code 1000. All that information which you see here on the top, that is called header information. And this is the line item information. So when we're doing what we're doing, 
you have basically entered this information so vendor tell me 1000 and my po also tell me 1000 so this amount and this amount matches so that's why we got a green light posted and that's why we come zero dollar balance so ultimately what is the process the process is this amount and this amount should match and then we said it and then we hit enter see the message in the bottom document number 5105610802 created so that basically means we are able to post an incoming document what is the meaning of this document what happened with this document what is the result of this document okay what is the meaning of this document okay. the document number 5105610802 has been created we exit out from here and now we want to see the document that is uh, mir4 is mir4 so now display verify accounting document that we want to go to mir4 this is mir4 we go to mir4 we put the hit enter document here account entry so now if you look at it here this is my invoice document logistic invoice document Document number is five one zero five six one zero eight zero two, which happened in year twenty twenty. And here, there is a fallen document. See that here, there is a fallen document. If we click on the fallen document, then we reach to finance. Now we are going to finance now. Now this is a document in the finance, in accounting department, It's the account payable document. This is the integration of MM with the finance. It's important. This document creation reflects the integration of MM with the finance. We double click on it. We double click on it. Okay. Stock there is no stock here. So here, look at it. So here we have account, and we have account cost cost. Okay. And here we have account cost cost. So this my vendor has been credited. This minus sign, and my GIR account has been debited. So here. in accounting document what we see we see that credit vendor account so my vendor account vendor has been credited in debit my gr ir clearing account this year clearing account is debited now uh, this is important entry from the integration point perspective so that is what we see in the accounting document now i want to go and check my balances so now i become liable to pay to this vendor so now we go to the finance So I exit out from here. I exit out from here, and I back from here. Back. Back. Now, if I go back, 
And if I go to finance now, if I go to accounting, if I go to financial accounting, and if I go to account payable, and if I go to account, and this is display balances, FK10N. FK10N is to provide in view of what we owe to this vendor. We want to see what is my total liability for this vendor means how much we owe to this vendor. So we owe, whatever we owe appears here, FK10N. So we go to display vendor and this is FK10N. So there is a real FK10N. So we put a vendor here, 105352, company code 1000, fiscal year 2020, we execute. Okay. Now this is what is the situation. So now we are in finance. So this vendor is a credit entry of thousand dollar. And what is my total balance? Balance is one so is one thousand dollars. Vendor is my creditor. We owe the money to the vendor. Yeah. And it's a balance. And that is why we have vendor balance display. Okay. Now when we make a payment to the supplier, which is the finance people will do, at the time, this credit, which is lying in my account, would be cleared out. And that is what we see. Okay, we go to the chapter number two. So information from an invoice. So when we get an invoice from a supplier, what we get? So when we get an invoice from a supplier, then we get a vendor. In that we have invoice, document date, purchase order, invoice term, material, quantity, invoice, all that information is there. So logistic invoice verification is the process of verifying the invoice submitted by the supplier to us. So that is where we have creating invoice process. Now here, this is how we do. And that is what we did in our last exercise. Okay. Now, if I go to document, if I come out from here, if I go to logistics, if I see the document which you posted, <clears throat> So what we did, so this amount and this amount should match. So my vendor tells me $1,000 and my system also tells me $1,000 and both are matching, balance zero. And when the balance is zero, when both these amount is matching, we can post invoice. That is what we see here. Header com he complete header information, which is so this yellow box, the first two boxes, is basically vendor invoice information. Vendor submit invoice. This information is coming from vendor's invoice. Then I put my document. So then we have our document. PO number. And with this PO number, we have amount. And then we see if there's a variance or not. If there's a variance, you cannot post it. 
because my story and vendor's story cannot be different. I cannot say vendor tell me thousand dollars and my system say eight hundred dollars. No, we can't post it. You should also say the same, and I should say the same. And when we meet, match, then we post. And if we both meet, we do a simulation if needed. If we need, we do adjustments. If there are differences, and when everything match, we post. Okay, then we post. This is in. Enjoy logistic invoice verification. Enjoy, I don't know what do you mean by enjoy. I'm assuming as if we start telling these enjoy is a sarcastic way. Nothing enjoy in SAP. All these different uh, multi screen transactions, a single screen transaction, when this happened several years back, then SAP start calling them enjoy as a transaction because they were multi-screen to single screen transactions now this is vendor view on the top and this is pov in the bottom so this is information submitted by the supplier on the invoice we enter that and this is our internal information header view POP. Then we get a green light. When we get a green light, then we verify. And when balance is zero, this information, this information is matching. Good, cool. We can post invoice document. This is the uh, enter invoice Miro. In the enter invoice bureau, we have an invoice document, it's step number one. We enter the date, invoice date, posting date, amount, the reference, PO number, this amount and this amount is matching in the last we see, and then we post. This is the same step we did, and we're gonna do it again. Okay. Now what happens is, So here, when we do the logistic invoice verification, so invoice we get from the supplier, and when we invoice get from the supplier, we post that, and when we post it, we saw that system create vendor account and JER account. System create vendor account, JER account. At the posting, it updates vendor account and JE. These two accounts get updated, and we saw that also. So, this is my vendor's account, and it's my current account. Okay. And then, this is what the posting is, takes place vendor account, credit. You see the minus sign? Credit. GA clearing account, debit, plus sign. If I go back here, if you see in the following document, if you go to accounting document, and here we have Costco, my vendor, minus. See that minus? Credit. JA clearing account, debit. Plus, minus, plus, credit, debit. Okay. Now what happens is, then when we take a purchase order, Then in the purchase order, I will let us say material quantity 50 pieces, price is $2 per piece. And uh, when we couldn't get good receipt, we did that many times. So this uh, 
color, this is orange color or pink color is basically where my stock account get updated. So 50 into two, so $100. So this the GI clearing account get credited here. So stock get up debited and GIR got get credited at the time of pink, which means Gurusit. When I do invoice verification, and we verified that in the last exercise, this Gurusit we have done many, many times before. So invoice receipt entry. So my vendor account get minus means credited. And then my uh, my GIR thing account get debited. So my vendor account, my cost is my vendor, vendor get minus credit, and the GI pin card gets debit. So there's a credit, there's a debit. Okay. PO based invoice verification. Invoice verification based upon purchase order. That is what mostly people do. That is what we did in our exercise also, where we created a purchase order based upon invoice. So invoice become uh, a formal document between buyer and seller. And all the following steps and processes is being done on the basis of logistic invoice certification. Okay. We purchase order, to receipt, logistic invoice verification. You can also do invoice verification based upon Gurusi. Not many people do this, but it's possible. Now, what is a GRB? GRB basically means that I'm not waiting for vendor to submit his invoice. I have a PO and I know how much this vendor has supplied. So I have a stock. And I just verify invoice based upon the buy purchase order, based upon guru seat information which we have. And we verify the payment information and give it to the vendor. Let them say this is not okay to them. That is called GR based invoice verification, where we are not waiting vendor invoice to come, but we verify invoice based upon the good receipt. So that is the good receipt. Invoice verification with reference to the receipt which we do. Aggregation in the invoice document. Now, what is this with aggregation basically? Now? So, look at here. So, let's say I'm entering this invoice and I enter the PO. In this PO, we have a line at the one, two, three. I don't want to see all the three line items. I want to see one, the total. I can aggregate so this is all information, some of it, all each line item, what this is. That is called all information. Then here you can have one line item that is called aggregation. So you can do that. Again. That is called aggregation in the equation. Here all multiple line items sum up to one. There is also something called account assignment during invoice verification. Now, what is this account assignment during invoice verification? Basically means many times what happens is in the purchase order, you see this cost center, there could be cost center. So, in the PO, there is a cost center. If the PO has a cost center, then what is the influence of that PO? Then what is the influence of the PO on the advice verification? And that is what we are talking about here. Okay.
So here, I want to do n to n purchasing process with cost center. So what I want to do, I want to create a PO with cost center. Then I want to create a guru seat. Then I want to create a logic stream verification. And then I want to verify LIV. Okay. That is MIR4. And this is Miro. Okay. Same step as we did before, some differences. Okay. Same step as we did before, some difference. Okay. So now I exit out from here. I want to go back to purchase order, MB21N. So there's another variation. I enter my vendor. So this is my vendor. And uh, Costco, uh, purchase 1000, purchase equal to 0, 0, company equal 1000. And then we go to material and we go to, let's say, quantity 150, whatever, price $10. But here in account seven category, eight, I put a K, K for cost center. If I go to K, We can put a cost center, 1,000. Okay. So we do it, cost center, 1,000. And we save it. After getting this, I want to go to Migo, same Migo, actually. And uh, I hit item OK, I hit check button. Now, as you see here, there is a consignment button here in the Migo. And uh, you will see there's a cost center. So system knows when we're doing a cost, uh, when we're doing a good seat, that this goes to a cost center. Okay. This goes to a cost center. And then we save it. The material document 600213 has been posted. And then last but not least, we want to go back to the Miro. Say Miro. We got to go to Miro. And uh, I put an invoice date here. I put an amount. I put up your number. So now I want to show you that I put a 1000 by, you know, intentionally, and my PO is for 1500 because I have 150 quantity. Now system gives me red button, incorrect. Because my vendor is saying 1000, my system saying 1500. So there's a balance of 500 credit. That's not correct. So we say, yeah, it's a mistake. And we talk to the vendor, he say, no, it's 1,500. And when I change 1,500, it becomes green. And balance is zero. And then we say, it. if you have a different, you get a red mark. Okay. Zero.
1500 we enter we save it error message text code five minutes exist okay Post again. Still message. Oh, okay. We posted it. So document 510560. Okay, we want to go and check the document, what is in it. And we go to MIR4, hit enter. Okay, so this was the document posted. Let's review it. The document is the material document number 5000863. And um, we have invoice date, posting date, amount 1500. There's a vendor and there's a payment term. And the uh, brand invoice 1000, my invoice is 1500. It's good. We want to see the foreign document and we want to see what's going on here. And if you see on the line item, there's a cost center also. Yeah. And if we go back to the following document, if I go to accounting document, and here I have a cost goal, which account got um, credited, 1500. But if you see here, my second account is 4000, which is associated with this cost center. This cost center has been debited. If you see the account entry here, verify here document, and then we verify because the cost get assigned to cost center. So verify accounting documents. And when we verify accounting documents, then uh, credit is my vendor account. With a vendor, we have to still pay. How we do cost center or not? We still have to pay to the vendor. So vendor is credited and debit our cost center account. So my cost center account, which is 4000, which is associated with cost center, get debited. So the cost get assigned to this cost center and this account. Now, what is the meaning of this cost get assigned to this cost center in the real world perspective? So from the real world perspective, this cost basically means that in the future, we would be, if we have to take the cost, then uh, the cost get assigned here. So that is what it basically means. Okay. okay. And that is what we can see this information in the system. Okay. I have a good meal. 10 minutes break. So take a 10 minute break and I'll talk about it. Thank you. Okay. I'm back now. Let us continue, and before we go, let us recap. Now, what we did? So, we did two exercises today. 
The first exercise we did was end-to-end -end purchasing process with invoicing, in which we created a material, we created a vendor, um, <clears throat> we created a PO, we created a good receipt, we did an invoice verification, um, transaction called Miro, then we created accounting document, MIR4, in which we saw in accounting document, it credited my vendor account, it debit my GRIR catering account, right? So that is the, so that is what we did, right? Then we did the next exercise in which we did with a cost center. So in that, what basically we did, that in the PO, we enter the cost center. So we create a PO with a cost center, we create a guru seat, we did invoice verification, Miro, and then we verify the invoicing document. Then we saw that, that entry in the accounting document are slightly different. So it basically credit my vendor account and then debit my cost center. Because the cost get assigned to cost center. That is what we did so far. That is why we have a account assignment during invoice verification process where you can have cost center. Duplicate check. Duplicate check is a field in the vendor master. I would like you guys to make a note of this line which I highlighted. In the vendor master, there's a field in accounting view. And if that field, duplicate invoice, is active, then what does it basically mean is that you cannot create second invoice with the same accounting vendor invoice document number. System checks. System checks. Okay. So here we have a prerequisite. The vendor master has to be set for duplicate invoice check. Okay, that is what we did. If you go to vendor master, you will see this indicator. If I go to vendor master, XK02. In the company code data, and here we have a check double invoice. So in that system, verify if a duplicate invoice is there or not there. That's where we have a duplicate invoice check. Then we have a something called exchanging email by XMO. I would like you make a note of that statement, XML. XML is stand for extensible markup language. It's a programming language. It allows you to exchange the data between two different SAP system, non-SAP system or SAP to non-SAP system, between two applications using XML in electronic format. So XML allows you to transfer the data between the system using extensive markup language. That is what this basically means. So that is what this basically means. Okay. 
Okay. So if you see here, there's my vendor, my supplier. I can send the information from the vendor to customer in electronic format. Okay. You can send the data inbound, or you can also send the data outbound. Okay. Using XML. Okay. So we did the um, logistic verification. We created invoice with the sense of the document. So we did that exercise. Now, I go back to the system. I want to go back to the system. Now, if you see here, there is a cancel invoice document. See that cancel invoice document. Cancel. Transaction code MR8M. Make a note of it. MR8M. So we go to MR8M. If I will cancel invoice, so this is my document which you posted, 500-5610-803, region for rejection. And then we hit save. See the message in the bottom. It tells me document reversed with the number 510-561080 and then clear finance document. Okay. So system has created another document, which is 804. If I exit out from here, if I give a display document, and this was 83, and I want to go to the next document, which is 84. Okay. If I go to 8.4, see here, it's a credit memo. There's a credit memo. What is the effect of this credit memo? We go to following document, and here we have another accounting document. We save it. Then see what happens. Look at here. My vendor account is debited, reversed. The effect is reversed. So what we are doing? We're doing next exercise, which is vendor invoice cancellation. Once invoice posted cannot be changed. So once you post invoice, then deal. You can't change it. You can't change invoice document once it has been posted. That is not possible. Okay. You cannot post. A document. Okay. Once you post it, cannot be changed. What you can do, we can cancel. So what happened if there's a user error? We post an invoice in a mistake. Something goes wrong, possible. But we can cancel. We can cancel. Posted invoice. And the transaction code is we cancel it. Then we verify. Verify cancelled invoice document. And how do we verify? We verify the same transaction code MIR. 
Then we verify the accounting document. There is a accounting document. Verify accounting document. In what is happening in accounting document? Again, this entry get reversed. This entry, which was there in the previous document, get reversed. So, credit, cost center account, and debit, I went account. So, effect is absolutely, absolutely 180 degree different. So, now, when the account has been debited. This is when the invoice cancellation. Verify. And that is what we see. So if you see the cost go, debit. Conception, that uh, cost center account, credit. There's a minus sign. Wherever you see minus means it's credit. So entirely entry has been reversed. Now I want to go back. So we did that. Now I want to verify vendor balances. Yeah. I want to go and verify vendor balances. What is the situation of vendor balances? We go to transaction code FK10 and and verify the balances. I go to FK10 in. So we select N, FK10 N, which is to display balances. I put my vendor, hit execute. And um, this is the situation. So we had debit entry of 1,500, credit of 1,000, 2,500. Why 2,000? Because we had a thousand plus one thousand five hundred, then I reverse it. So there's a debit entry. Net net one thousand one thousand. If I double click on it, then we'll see the old document which we have posted for this vendor. So this is the account we have posted. So we did in the morning forty seven four zero zero four seven. That's time for thousand dollars. Then we did another document which is M zero 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 four eight. And this is also credit. So we did two credit entry for this vendor. So this total credit become 1,000 and 1,500, 2,500. But then this is invoice. This document is in reverse. MR8M means it is a cancellation document. This cancellation is debit of 1,500. So 2,000 minus credit entry, 2,500. Debit entry, 1,500. Net is credit of 1,000. Okay, so that is how system give the, this is my total situation which happens in the front. Now I want to go back and verify your history. So I want to go and verify your history. So I want to go and verify your history, transaction code ME23 Gen. So I want to go and check this your history was going on. So for that, I go to slash n, ME23N. And this was my PO, uh, not this PO, because this PO was uh, having a call center on it. So, no, this cannot be the PO. Okay, let me make a note of the PO. Okay, this is the PO. You can go to PO. So this is the PO number. It's easy to track. So it's a PO number. Okay. Now in this PO number. We had a cost center. I want to go to peer history. And in this peer history system tells me that 
I did a guru seat. This is a guru seat document number 600213, which happened on this date for 150 pieces for this amount. But we had an invoice receipt. There are two documents here one credit, one debit. So 803, this is one document for 1000 tagma, and then there's another document, 804. Where the amount has been reversed. So we have done two postings. If I go to status, yeah, system tells me ordered 150, delivered 150, is still to be delivered is zero, invoiced is zero. So because my original invoice has been reversed, therefore this PO remain open for invoicing. Because system consider as if this invoice is not done. So invoicing become zero. Okay. So now I take the same PO. So I verify PO history, I verify PO his status. So we verify both. We verify PO history and we verify PO status. And we checked PO is still not invoiced. The system understand because it was invoiced, but after invoice it was reversed. And because it was reversed, therefore that PO become open for next step, right? So PO says that it is not yet invoiced. Okay. So now I again go back to the Miro. I go back to the Miro. And I put the date. I put my amount. Hit enter. Enter my PO number, hit enter, and then we hit save. Um, okay. So now document has been posted again. After getting posting of the document, I want to go back and check this document. I want to go back and check again document. So again, new document has been created. So this was the document. New status. Then we invoice again. With now, it create document there. So we did, uh, this was the first document which we did. So this was the, this was the document we created before, 803, then we cancel. It created another document. This was 804. And now we get another document. Now it creates 805. After that, I see the vendor balances. I see the vendor balances. Let's get an N and see what happens. It should create. So I go back to FK10 and FK10N. I put my vendor number, I hit execute. Now here it should change. Hit execute. Now my credit entry is 2500 and balance is 2500. Now we have a fourth document. So 4748, 
four nine five zero. This was original invoice for thousand dollars. This is the original invoice credit for one thousand five hundred. This four nine is invoice which we credited, so it reverses. So this and this nullifies, and then I get a new invoice five zero with amount one thousand five hundred, and total net outstanding for this supplier is two thousand five hundred. So we owe two thousand five hundred to this supplier. Now, if I go back and check the PO history, so now check the PO history. If I go back and check PO history, and then see what happens in the PO history, is from here I exit out. I want to go back, and I want to go and check my PO history. I go to ME23N. Now in the PO history also there is a three document. Yes, eight zero three, eight zero four, eight zero five. That is what I wrote it here. We get eight zero three, eight zero four, eight zero five. So now the third document has been created, which has been, which is the correct document. And now if I go to status, ordered hundred, one fifty, delivered one fifty, still zero zero, and invoice one fifty. Everything has been invoiced. So we are all good now. So this is how you can cancel and recancel the doc, right? So that is where SAP allows you to uh, create. Is open peer the same thing? Open peer the same thing? What do you mean by open peer? It's open. It's a not invoiced peer. It's a peer which is not invoiced. So we created this exercise. Now I want to do another exercise, which is to do vendor credit memo. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I want to create a PO. So I want to do PO ME21N. I enter the vendor. And I have this material, and uh, I select the same material, and uh, the quantity I put ten pieces, ten dollar. And here, if you see in the right hand side, we have a return indicator. So that basically means I'm sending this material back. So please make a note of that statement that is called return vendor. Return vendor basically means. I'm sending the material back to the supplier. Okay. So that is called return vendor, where we are sending the material back to the supplier. Okay. So here, so we have written indicator. Okay, written indicator. We said it. So PO number got created. A PO. I make a note of the PO. Now I want to create a good receipt. And we hit enter. So copy my uh, material. Quantity ten pieces. I would like you guys to make a note of the moment I one sixty one. Make a note of it. Pen and paper. Moment type one sixty one. Okay. Please make a note of it. Okay. 
Moment of 161. Moment of 161 is for for returning the material back to the vendor. Make a note of this, please. 161. Make a note of this one. Sixty one. It's a new movement. Act. Okay, I put a, uh, there is a minus here. Minus means material is going back. There is a minus sign, hit enter. Okay. And then we save it. Item okay. A check and hit save. Document 600214 has been posted. Now I want to go to Miro. I put my invoice date. I put my amount. I put my your number, hit enter. And see the message here. There's a red class. Message error. And then Rather than transaction invoice, I change it to credit memo. And when I make it to credit memo, it becomes a green light because it's material going back. So we are crediting, we are doing a credit memo for a my vendor. Hit enter. Document 500806 has been posted. After that, if I want to go back, and verify the document. And if you see here, if you go to following document, document posting, and here my Costco has been debited, reverse entry, because I'm sending the material back to the vendor. The credit is reduced, and the account has been credited. So what we did, the credit memo, in case of vendor return so you know he can return the material to the vendor it's possible it's not that we are always taking material in we can send the material back to the vendor as well then what happened to the invoicing and go to see it so we did a po with return indicator okay. we did that then we get a guru seat and the movement type was 161 and then we did a good receipt, invoice receipt. Credit memo. And then we verify. <coughs> then we verify account entry. Verify account doc. In accounting document, what we saw The debit is vendor account and credit is GR 
IR Terrain Account. So there is an example of how do we do credit memo in case of vendor return. Now I want to also verify how do we check the vendor balances. I want to check the vendor balances because it should reduce the liability. Let's get an N because we send the material back to the supply, so it should reduce the liability. And see here, it was 2,500. Now it becomes 2,400. If I double click on it, this is my another entry. Debit entry, $1,000 uh, for $100. So my total liability reduces from $2,500 to $2,400. Okay. So that is how we do vendor invoice verification. I want to do something called parking <coughs> process. Parking is two-step invoicing process. Let's do this exercise. Okay. So what are we going to do? So in this, we're going to create PO. We're going to create a GR. We're going to do park. Invoice document, then review, then post, park document, and then review accounting document. Parking is two step uh, invoicing. Now, what does that basically mean of that is statement? The meaning of that is statement is many times what happens is that we need to do invoicing in two step, two different steps. Okay. In two different steps. So junior people is entering a document and the senior person okay. for the senior document. We can have either person will come and audit and review and post it. So that is why this is a two step invoicing process. The two step invoicing process. Let's create a PO. This PO is the same PO as we've done many times. Nothing different in this PO. We enter the vendor number. We enter the material. Enter the PO. Quantity 10. So 100 pieces, 10 pieces. It's safe. Is a peer number. I do a guru seat, regular guru seat, nothing different in this guru seat as we've done many of them. It's just so we can do right and then we say it. Okay, so this is it. What is document? Now, where is parking? You we'll go back. So this is the parking place. M I R seven. Make a note of it. This is a new transaction. So by M parking. So junior person will enter the data and park it. 
and then senior person will come review the park document and post it okay so make a note of it Okay, make a note of that step. Okay, so we go to MIR server. This is the part two. We cannot play if you're not. There's a new transaction. So this is parking incoming voice. I enter the date, enter the amount, enter the peer number, hit enter. Is it right view? Oh, it's a current memo. I have to change it. Okay, so change it here. So the, it is invoice. So now it is fine. It's a green light. So thousand dollar, thousand dollar. Because last exercise we did credit memo, so it was a credit memo. Yes. So change it, and then we save it. See the message in the bottom. Document number has been parked. So this has been document entry parking. Now I want to see the document. What is going with the parking? Hit enter. So this is a display parking document. I go to follow document. See the message on the bottom. Document 5100 has been initially parked. It's entered. It's parked. Okay. It's parked. So the document has been created, but that document is in the park status. If I go back. To check the vendor display balances, and if I see here, fifty-one, it doesn't affect here because it's park status. It's not my balance yet, so it has been parked. We saw the impact on the balance display, and after park, post the document, review the document. 
and we also review when the balance is. Now I want to post the park document. So I want to go back, go back, and I want to go back here, display accounting document, hit enter. Now these are park document. I go to change mode. Change park document, and then I hit post, and you hit enter. See the message in the bottom. Now the invoice document has been posted. And after invoice document has been posted, if I go back and check the following document, it should have a complete document. Yep. Now it has a complete document. That message which has coming before parked is not coming. Is a proper document, accounting document is created, hit my accounting document. If I go back and check the balances, if I go to FK10N and, N and check the balances, what is going to happen here? And see what's going on. Hit execute. Now my balance has increased to 3,400. You can see here. Every one thousand dollars. Now the balance become three thousand and four hundred. So we have done the review accounting document, post park document, then review accounting document, and we also review vendor balance. So this is a. Uh, End to end exercise. And then so we're done. Thank you.